Hi everyone, welcome back for part three of my Arduino quadcopter autopilot project. Uh, in this particular video, we're going to do some testing today, some actual testing rather than just showing you what it's supposed to look like. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to try and figure out how far we can go with the quadcopter before the radio gives out and can't communicate with the base station anymore how long the uh, video transmitter on the drone will go before uh, it cuts out and can't contact the receiver on this end anymore. And we're also going to check some of the data to debug and make sure that all the data coming in actually works right. To that end, I've now added an SD module to the device so that it records all incoming sentences into the base station on an SD card. All right, let's get started. Okay, so before I trigger the startup process, I'd just like to give you all a quick heads up. In the course of this video, you'll hear moments of speech cut out. Both I and my dad are licensed amateur radio operators. For the sake of privacy, I've edited out our call signs. All right, let's start the test. All right, we are ready for acquisition. We are acquired. All right, so what we're looking at is RSSI and the frames, and then this should stay while we're walking away roughly 180 degrees off because we'll be walking away from it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the two big ones to watch are this. Okay. And once it stops counting up, Call me and let me know. Same with the video. Okay. Radio check. Hey, radio check. Okay. All right. We are set to go. All right. All right, we are ready to go. Are you ready to record? Yeah. No, just with me. As long as the camera's pointed the same way we are. Okay. All right. I knew the video from the quadcopter to the video receiver on the other end would cut out long before we ever got to the maximum distance of the radio to the base station. So I asked my wife to walk with me and record video on her phone too, so I can show you guys the whole test from start to finish.
Right, you know, operate here real quick and radio in. Good. How are we looking so far? Uh, frames are counting up nicely. Uh, as long as I don't talk on the radio, your video is uh, moderately intermittent. Okay, what's uh, the distance reading read at right now? The distance reading is zero. Oh, that's not good. Okay, we're going to keep on going then. Copy. It took me a few moments to realize this, but I realized even though the distance camera wasn't functioning correctly, I could still continue the tests as long as the GPS location was transmitting properly to the base station, and then go back later and calculate how long the actual distance was. I've since gone back to look at the problem, and discovered that the issue was with my math. The math calculates out the distance in kilometers, but I was transmitting it to the base station as though it was in meters. So I went back and changed the calculation so that it calculates it in meters now, and transmits the correct calculation to the base station. Yeah, I'm calling that in for the video. Read you loud and clear. Alright, let's keep going. The distance on usable video between the transmitter and the receiver ended up being about 400 meters. definitely wasn't right. Uh, I went back and calculated that, and when the distance actually updated, it only calculates out to about half a kilometer. Acknowledge. Probably get up to about here and they will die. Are we still intermittent? Yeah, it's only stopping periodically. Generally, it's still a good frame count. 
Wow, I'm impressed. We're all the way out of the park. Your RSSI is bouncing between minus 96 and minus 91. Okay, uh, we'll go to the end of this street and then we're going to call it whether it's draft or not. start heading back then. I'm going to unplug the drone now. We'll see you in a few minutes. Uh Alright. So that should give us a pretty good baseline to work with. When the radio became intermittent, we were at about 610 meters. And when it cut out altogether, we were at just under a kilometer in distance from the base station which is far more than adequate for a baseline test of the autopilot. It looks like there's still a bit of debugging to do in the communications. I've noticed the GPS data seems to become randomly corrupted, based on the fact that the corresponding distance and bearing data seem to be affected. I assume this is actually a problem reading in the NMEA sentences from GPS on the control unit. I'll attempt to sort that out prior to the next video. In the next video, we'll be doing a short motor spin-up test to verify the autopilot can properly send out to the flight controller. We'll also use a standard radio controller to send an override to the quad and attempt to force it into a shutdown state. This function is critical to verify, as this will be used in flight emergencies to force the quad to perform a landing. Assuming that all works properly, the video after that will be the quad's first hover test. See you guys in the next one.